Two separate studies of the West Antarctic ice sheets found that climate change and warming oceans have started an unstoppable chain reaction that's melting the ice shelf and glaciers, threatening 10 percent of Antarctica's total land ice volume. Here to explain the potential impacts are Scripps Institution of Oceanography Professor Helen Amanda Fricker and Professor Jeff Severinhouse. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you Peggy. Jeff, how large is this West Antarctic uh, ice sheet on land and, and how fast is it melting? It's a big, big piece of, of land surface. Uh, the part that's vulnerable is something like the size of Texas. And the, the rate at, at which Antarctic is currently uh, contributing to sea level is about half a millimeter a year. That's uh, 50 centimeters per century, or say about two feet per century. And, and is, is that faster than predicted? Because it sounds like a little amount. Yeah, it, it, it is faster than uh, predicted. And uh, the reason is that uh, the ice sheet has a fundamentally unstable character to it, and we, we've known for many years that, that it, it could have this, and now we've got the data to really back it up. And then let's dig a little bit deeper about that, Helen, um, as far as the actual cause of this, and, and maybe the precipitous cause, why it seems to be speeding up. So the West Antarctic ice sheet is actually um, a marine ice sheet, which means that it's below, the ice is sitting, the bottom of the ice is sitting below sea level. The other thing is that the slope of the continent that it's sitting on or the land it's sitting on is a reverse slope. So it gets, uh, the ice gets deeper as you go inland. So uh, what's happening is the ocean is coming in underneath the floating part of the ice sheet, which is called an ice shelf. It's melting. The grounding line, which is the boundary between the grounded ice and the floating ice, is then moving inland which means that more of the base of the ice is exposed to the water, the, to the warm water, and the ice, um, the, the grounding line is retreating. And it's unstable because the grounding line retreating along a reverse slope means that you get more ice crossing the grounding line as time goes on. And, and Jeff, so, so this is happening, and, and we're, we have these little incremental, it seems like incremental changes, but over the, the, the size of the globe, what kind of impact on the sea levels uh, could we see from this, and what's the timeline for that? It's, it's going to be something like uh, four feet total if this process is, goes to completion, and it would be something like 500 years, plus or minus 300 years. It's, very, it's very uncertain just how... Full four feet, but could yeah. you see a foot or two in the next 100 years, or, or do we know? Um, we yeah we have a pretty good idea that it's it's not going to be a huge amount it's it's you know it's just going to be a f you know a few centimeters by 2100 but it, it that'll add to other sources of melting ice which means that we can expect about three feet of sea level rise by 2100. And, and, and going with this, are there any immediate concerns that this this melting as far as either on our climate or on ocean levels rising? No, this is a long-term thing. This is something for our great-grandchildren, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I also understand that uh, it, it's not uniform on the coastlines, this, this rising level. Um, do you know who's going to be hit the hardest? Yeah, the, the farther you are away from Antarctica, the, the more sea level rise you'll get, basically. And, and uh, so, but um, hmm. the things that are m most important are the storms, the storm surges, uh, the, these uh, very long-term, you know, gradual uh, rises are, are small compared to the, the, you know, 10, 20 feet that you'd get during Hurricane Sandy or something like that. I see, so it has an impact. It's sort of integrated into the, into yeah. the climate. Um, Helen, this ice melting cycle, it, it, everything I read about it, everything I hear about it, they keep calling it unstoppable. Why is it unstoppable? So unstoppable meaning that it's because of this marine ice instability that I talked about, marine ice sheet instability, um, it's kicked in now. And it's a kind of a runaway um, process where because more and more ice is now coming into this, um, this to be exposed to the melting, it, you can't stop it because it's it's already grown to the out of um, it, it's it's a nonlinear process. It's a, so so basically, it's uh, it, it sounds to me like it's almost like adding water to the ice, not technically, which is going to melt the ice faster. Is that it, would that be an analogy? Sort of. You're you're exposing more of the base of the ice sheet to I the see. warm water coming in I underneath see. now, and I that's see. not you. You can't. You can slow it down, but you can't reverse it, which is why it's being called unstoppable. Um, but you. The other thing we can have you to slow is, it? We can slow it, 
yes, and that's the key thing. We can slow it. I mean, we can definitely do something about the rate at which this is going to happen. Okay, and if I could just end on this very quickly, if there's one thing we could do to slow it, what could it be? Change policies so we can reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere would be my answer. Okay. And how about you? Do you agree with that? Yes, uh, like a, a carbon tax. A lot of economists say that the most efficient way to solve this problem is a carbon tax. Okay, and that's a whole other discussion. You'll have to get on our website, kpbs.org. Helen, Amanda Fricker, and Jeff Severinhouse, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Peggy.